bunch of slackers! Yeah! Listen up! You lazy bums are the cause of that accident! You're not getting any time to confess your sins, though. Why not? Because I'm not giving it to you! If you got time to be sorry, you got time to get your ass in gear! If you got time to think, you got time to get your fingers moving! Don't even start thinking you got a brain to think with! Hey guys! Welcome back to Let's Play Xenosaga Episode 2. Why did I show a clip at the start of the episode from Episode 1? Hmm, I wonder. Mainly just because Vandercam is bloody awesome. And he's hilarious. But yeah, that's pretty much uh, the only real reason for that, if you don't know what's coming up. Anyway, last time we made our way through most of the uh, remains of Old Milsha, and on our way to the central area, we run into a random cutscene as we try to go by. Why is this damn thing not working? And that's why I played the glitch. External speakers? Welcome back. We have mobilized all units, but we're all exhausted from training earlier. May I... Oh, line up, maggots! Did you pansies already forget your training? Do you know how bad you made me look? Listen to me! What you think means nothing! What you want means nothing! You do as I say! I am the boot in your buttocks! You! What is your problem? Were you born that dumber your drunk mama slapped you on the wrong end when you squirted out? <laughs> Why are you laughing? Do I amuse you? I'm tired of all you panty waist nitwits! You make me physically ill! Drop and give me a million! I will break you! Enemy unit discovered on deck! Stand by! What did you say? Damn it! Found us. That was excellent. All hands, prepare for battle. Target the vector aim. This is not a drill. Show me everything you've got. Yeah, I played the clip so that we could kind of see what, because uh, we haven't seen this character since the start of episode one. This is Vandercom, just as uh, he was in Xenogears. He's one of the few characters that hasn't really changed in Xenogears, um, you know, other than his cross on his face becoming an X. Still don't know why he decided to tattoo himself thusly. Anyway, he has a defensive shield deployed, which will reduce a lot of damage. Now, the damage that you're able to do, I think, for everything is reduced at the start, but anytime you target him on this slot, as this tries to allude to very poorly, uh, it, his shield is deployed elsewhere, so you'll actually break it by doing damage. So we want to make sure that we can deal some damage on that slot to break it. I think you have to use an attack that he's weak to, which luckily for us is everything. Uh, he's 125% weak to every element save for Thunder and Pierce Hit Slash. Uh, thunder he is 200% weak to. However, the shield will of course have an impact on that. And he has many friends with him. So our plan for this fight, other than having annoying status effects on us a lot, is using Counter Boost, which is why I have Revenge uh, Power, whatever it's called, on everybody. Uh, well, specifically Momo and Cosmo, since they're the ones running the mechs. But uh, I'm going to be using them uh, exclusively in this fight because they have much better ether defense than the Asher and I can use more elements that are the boss is weak to. Basically, since he's 125% weak to everything, you want to be able to use any attack that attacks on multiple fronts. So like an Aura Slash or an Aura Pierce, for example. And of course, the Dina is the only one who has a Thunder-based attack out of all the max. You canceled my turn. You are evil. Stop doing that. I would also like to steal from this guy. That is perfect, because I need to steal. Psycho Pocket on the boss. We definitely need to steal. Since prior to this event, we haven't had the ability to do a multi-hitting attack in our mechs that hits more than one. However, now that we have what we just stole, since we already had one, we can actually do that with the Dina. So, very, very important that you get the second one. That's the rare item. The common one, we will pretty much be guaranteed to get anyway. Uh, the other thing we want to do is we want to do boost one so that we have a maximum boost at the start of this. I'm going to stock up the Dina to 300 EC. 
And once I do that, I should be able to start uh, a little bit of a chain. So once we get 300, then we can start the uh, whole system here. But first, uh, actually, I don't think we need to do anything else. We were pretty much all set up, so you might as well stock. I'm going to want you stocked sooner rather than later anyway. All right, the other thing. Okay, that's kind of unfortunate. But um, the other thing is now that we have counter or combo boost, we can boost when we're still on the screen. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to boost the Dina because the Dina is going to do a lot of damage. But first things first, I need to attack you with something that uh, to boost your thing. So we dropped his shields. Perfect. That's exactly what we need to do. And I'm going to continue to boost the Dina because I need to do that in order to boost everything up. So we're going to hit you one more time here. So I hope that didn't kill my chain. So if that killed my chain, I will be very unhappy. Because the entire... Actually, I think it did kill my chain, too. Uh, let's see here. We'll boost again. And I'll do an attack. Yeah, it killed my chain. Basically, as you damage it on that slot, it will eventually lose its ability to do lots of things that you would probably want it to do. And unfortunately, it's counter boosting way too much. What I wanted to do is continue attack with beam attacks to build up a beam chain and then use X Buster to take out all the other little guys. Since apparently that's not going to work. Let's see. Yeah, it's not going to be enough. Oh, well, we'll attack you one more time here, and then I'll cast Boost on my next opportunity. If you get uh, critical. Now, I didn't get any boost. So, we're going to throw on Boost one. We're going to try this one more time. And then, regardless of what happens, we'll just unload with... Uh, uh, you know what? That's even better. We'll go X Buster on that one. We'll hit everybody, take them all down. And if you noticed earlier, yeah, lots of damage. But uh, as we hit him, they're building up to an attack, which I'm not particularly worried about because it's not really that strong. But uh, the point of that is, is as I was attacking earlier, they were, I, one of the things that I broke when I was attacking their shield is their ability to summon new guys. I think you can also break their main gun and break something else. I can't remember what it is, but it doesn't really matter because now that we've gotten this ready, we're just going to stock up to level two and you need to stock as well because at level two, if you pair her with Xion, we have a thunder ability, which also has strike on it. So that's going to do lots of damage. As you can see, they've transport room is now fixed, meaning that they can transport new guys out. However, they're not going to survive long enough. Now, they will always counter boost at the end and access auxiliary fuel, giving them 6,000, excuse me, more HP. Doesn't really matter because they're pretty much toast. Anyway, the whole point of this fight is just to have some fun at uh, their expense because, of course, Vandercom is hilarious, he's funny as hell, but he's also dead. So, anyway, that was fun. We get lots of experience points for that one. I think uh, if you wait long enough, he can blow himself up and you miss out on the experience, but... Don't do that. Uh, Charge Clean is the common drop from the boss. Uh, he can resummon more of those guys, and you can kill more of them. You'll get more experience, more drops, but they only drop, I think, Junk Circuits or Scrap Iron, so that doesn't matter at all. And we can just kill more enemies if we want to level up. If you try and approach them now, you can't do anything. It just says, let's leave them alone, which is probably a pretty good idea. Anyway, let's roll up this way and head into... Well, they haven't really said where we're going. We're just going to keep heading in this direction. There's a couple of items left to pick up, but first we have a cutscene. 
Yeah. Did they mention that we're heading to Labyrinthos? Well, we are. But we can't go in there in the Asus, so the door over to left is where we need to go. But let's blow some stuff up and get a few more items first. Nano Repair A, kind of useless. I think all of these are empty. Oh no, there is a treasure chest, that's right. Can I talk to it, please? Thank you. Uh, G status double, which I guess could be useful. I already have one of those, uh, but uh, it'll start to get useful once I learn quick, which is the main reason you would want to use it. So your quick lasts longer. Anyway, let's talk to the ladder. Thank you. And we'll head down in here. Now, surprisingly, this is one of the few areas, and it has awesome music, by the way. So we're still sticking to the water theme, but we get awesome music. I love this theme. It's so much fun. But anyway, um, this is one of the few dungeons where mainly what would be regarded as some of the worst characters are useful because they have set elements on their weapons already, and unlike these four, they cannot change those. You cannot use sword ethers on these ones because they already have them on there, so they're not not they're elemental attacks instead of non-elemental attacks. So, Xion is dominant against some of the enemies in here, the mechanical ones, and Chaos and Ziggy are dominant against the other two, but Xion's still pretty good against them as well. So I'm just gonna stick with this party since we don't tend to use these characters a lot. Xion we do post-game, but that's just because really broken ability, which is very necessary. But uh, anyway, I'm going to re-equip and set everything up, save, and I will be right back. Okay, we're back. Now, not a whole lot to the setup. It's actually pretty straightforward. Uh, swimsuit, combo boost, revenge power, a rare plus 30 because it doesn't really matter what else you put there. I like it. Uh, same for Ziggy. You have... Yours are a little more interesting. I don't have EP half on because Ether Burst is by far one of the best abilities in the game. Doubles your ether attack power, but that only applies to attack power, not healing power. So it's kind of broken. It means she's gonna, it would literally, without EP half, it would cost her double the MP to heal the same amount. So it's kind of broken in that sense. It's kind of bad. So you kind of need EP half on if you're going to use it in a boss fight. But in normal encounters, you don't really need it all that much. So I'm just going to put revenge power on instead because revenge power is great. Everyone else is kind of set up the same way except for Momo. So Momo and Xion will pretty much have swimsuit, combo boost, and ether burst throughout pretty much the rest of the game now. Anyway, that being said, let us move forward. This area is, um, well, it's basically the puzzle area of the game. There are a lot of puzzles here, and there's nothing in there. Okay. Anyway, uh, we can't go down there yet, so we need to head this way. And I think there is one in one of these. Item? Item. Med kits. Yay? Anyway, let's show off the first new enemy in here. This dungeon will be done with characters, and the characters we have are pretty okay, effective against these guys. So, when you have Ether Burst on Xion, stock once, stock once with anybody else. Um, yeah, I kind of need to build up my. Uh, oh, I should probably go over what they're uh, weak to here. Uh, break zone of CB, 150% to beam, 200% to thunder. Uh, let's see, 120 to hit if you care, but weak to Ether, which of course is the main one. So C, B, I'm just going to attack with you so I can build up my uh, combo or my boost gauge there. And you only need to really stalk her once, but just because of the way things are working out. Let's see here. So because we can combo, actually, that's not going to work out for me. Oh, well, whatever. I'm just going to attack you a little bit. I'm kind of screwing around with how I have everything set up at the moment. <laughs> okay, so we're going to boost. Might as well boost you. I'm going to stock with you. And then we're going to boost Xion, even though she's right there. We're going to go C, B, down. Get them on the ground. Attack twice. And you win. 
They have like 3,500 HP from the start, but they die really quickly to Xion because Xion with Ether Burst is incredibly good. So we're gonna boost you. Um, I might as well unload with you to build up some more combo. And let's see, we'll build you in. Waste yours, even though you're not gonna do that much damage. And I'm going to load the rest of yours to build up my combo boost gauge, even though I don't need it to kill you. If you're not screwing around like I did trying so to get your no combo problem. gauge back up from the boss fight, these battles take like a minute to a minute and a half with a, two of those guys. It's really, really fast, really, really easy. It's surprisingly easy considering... Think about how long we've been kind of waiting to get back to Milsha, and we get an area with some reasonably difficult mechs, or a couple of them anyway, and then we get this area with some very, very easy enemies. At least for now. There will be harder ones later on, for sure. But many of them are rehashes, as you can see, revised, uh, from, in fact, I think it's the previous dungeon, if I remember correctly. I could be wrong, I can't remember. Anyway, Carnicus. Okay, sure. Uh, again, mech enemies, weak to beam, weak to thunder, 150 to beam, 200 to thunder, and weak to ether. Break zone of CC. Okay, so we're going to stock you. And we're going to hope that I can uh, get the extra point. Yeah, so having additional break bonuses of up to 25% really, really helps. Because, oh, 2 HP left, really, game? Because that's usually enough to take them down. Once you gain a level, that will almost never happen. But, uh, yeah. So Xion's going to take one more shot at this guy and blow and he'll fall down. Kind of unfortunate, but oh well. All right, so we're going to boost you in there. Um, you can do your thing if you want to. And then boost you in. Your attacks don't matter. I'm just using it to build up um, on my boost gauge there. And fire a couple of times. And that's all you need. Predictable. Pretty no much problem. all the mech fights in this area will go like that. Yeah, see, a minute 44, a lot less screwing around in that one, almost 30 seconds faster. Yeah. Secret key 13. This one, if I recall correctly, is... Is it this one? Yeah, it's limiter up. Increases max HP and EP by 10%. Uh, does not take any benefit from double power to double its effects kind of useless in my opinion because 10 percent's really not that much and there are much more valuable things to put on but it's entirely up to you if you want to use it yeah. let's blow some yeah. more things up and if you would have came over here earlier you would have noticed that that was in the way so i'm gonna go back and backtrack around to where we got the uh, last item at the top of the stairs and i will see you in a moment all right there we go just figured I'd take that uh, whole backtracking thing off screen. Could have told you that we'd be right below where we were, but oh well. Yeah, not, not much of a puzzle yet, but there are a bunch of them in this area. Here's one. This one. If you remember from one of the Anima Relic dungeons in Xenogears, we've already done one of these puzzles. And my answer is written on one of these somewhere or another. All right, there we go. So you want to go six. Basically, one side, the left side, will raise it by six. The other side lowers it by either five or two, depending on which one you press. And you're trying to get the water even so that you can walk around the left side, up the ladder, and then down the stairs. So we want to go six. Come on. Five. Yeah, it's kind of slow, but go oh well. And two. Come on. There you go. And then we want to go six. And then two. And 
and that should be pretty much all we need to do. It should balance them out, assuming I did that right. Good, I didn't go off the wrong guide. I got two guides, and they say different things. I haven't tried the uh, second one. But anyway, we're going to fast forward going up here, because it's just walking up a ladder. Run over here, run down here, run up another ladder. Hence why fast forward. Can I get off the ladder? Thank you. But not too much fast forward, because the music is too awesome to want to not listen to. All right, down another set of stairs into the water again. Kind of a strange way to get into the building, considering um, other events. Lots of ladders. Not a lot of battles, though. I think there's another battle coming up, though. Yeah, there's a soldier back there. This leads to the human component. Might as well show this off uh, to end the video here. The human enemies are kind of like they were in the last area. Battle is like. We have a lot of uh, P.S.S variations with different break zones, but all pretty close to the same uh, weaknesses. 150 to Aura, 150 to Fire, 200 to Slash. Uh, some of them have, I think, only 150 to Slash. It really doesn't matter. They're all weak to basically the same things. So in this one, one of the other skills that I learned and didn't really talk about is Stock 1. So I'm going to be using Stock 1 with Xion in these fights because she's not as effective, but specifically Ziggy is since they're weak to Slash. Uh, Chaos is effective too, specifically to down them. Usually what I have is I have Xion and uh, Chaos take on one of these enemies, and Ziggy can usually handle the other one by himself. Mainly I use it on Ziggy, the uh, stock one, to get him set up because he's so much slower than everybody else. But once you get things all set up, like I'm right here, so this is the P2. The P2 variant break zone is BB. So let's just end him right now. As soon as you get Slash going, you're usually pretty good. And of course I got cancelled on that, which was not very nice of you. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to boost myself, and you are the B2 variant, and your break zone is BC. And... Sorry. Is that enough to kill you? Ah, oh well. I didn't get any I extra points. An to the fighting. But you can do pretty much however you want. I'm dicking around a lot in these fights, just kind of to show off the new strategies now that we have more skills and combo boost because combo boost is so good just allows you to kill things when you want to instead of waiting oh i forgot there was a cutscene here i guess we're gonna end with the cutscene that works too that's odd that's this more than somehow odd. feels different than it feels the different there's spider webs everywhere you're right it almost looks like there are people still working here recently. That's not what I noticed, but okay. Nano machines gone out of control. Not spiders. I have heard nano of nano machines making rooms and passageways on their own. I guess that's a nod to the segment address files, but no, no, it doesn't feel like that. It's alive. This is more like, like some sort of consciousness is at work here. Scary. It's Udu. Its presence has spread this far out. It would appear our destination is right in front of us. Except there's something in the yeah. way. Yeah, there's no more time to lose. Okay, then. Anyway, this really strange area now contains these things. I, I don't really know why. Uh, you can talk to this thing. It says something about a control room for water storage plants and being changed. This is the door we came through, by the way. They don't really mention it. And that's the door we need to go through in order to continue, which we will do, of course, in the next episode. So that's all for this one, and I'll see you guys next time.